Monochrome. You can get this look three ways. The first way is by shooting film, like medium format film, like I do on this Rolleiflex 2.8 and some black and white film. The next thing you can do is you can get a monochromatic camera like my Leica M11 monochrome that I've had for a few months now and this only shoots black and white, which is great because I can use color filters and I still don't know how I feel about it, but you can do this to get the monochromatic look. But I'm gonna venture out and say that most people use their digital camera, whether it's something like this Leica M11 or Sony or Canon, a Fuji, a Nikon. And then in their post editing, they simply convert that photo from a color photo to black and white and you get that monochromatic look. I have done and currently do all three of these things to have black and white photos. This world is full of vibrancy and color. It's what we expect every single day. Black and white photography invites us to pause and take in something that is unnatural, a colorless world, where we can explore shade and shadow and the spectrum of highlights. Without color, each image becomes a study in contrast, in form, and in feeling. Even more, a black and white photo doesn't really age. It exists in a realm untouched by the trends of time, where light and shadows speak a universal language. In every monochromatic shot, there is a depth that draws us in. And of today's monochromatic film stocks, there is one that is universally loved. And today, we are going to bring the look of that film into the world of color. And I'm stoked to introduce Very Good Presets, Tri-X. Kodak Tri-X 400 is a black and white film that's known for its contrast, known for its grain, and ultimately for its versatility in a lot of different lighting scenarios. This film was introduced around the same time as the Leica M system. This film came out in 1954, and since then it has been used in almost every genre of photography, but it got its really great reputation with photojournalism, with street photographers, and with people that were dedicated to making art. This monochromatic look has inspired generations of photographers with its timeless aesthetic, and its ability to capture moments with depth and character. If you are part of the Patreon for this channel, you would know that this preset has been in development for many, many months as we dial in a digital version of this film stock. And I say this with every preset we release, you cannot fully replicate film with digital because film is a physical and chemical process and digital is a digital process of ones and zeros. But I've worked really hard to make this as accurate as possible to Tri-X. And today I wanna to show you what is included in the Very Good Presets Tri-X pack, how it all looks, how it behaves, and what you can expect across a range of digital RAW files. But before I do that, if this is your first time here, my name's Dave, I'm a photographer and videographer from the Bay Area of California. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. I post two videos a week unless something goes horribly wrong. I'm also the owner and founder of Very Good Presets and you can check out all the links right below. So let's start by identifying what is included in the preset pack. There are two base presets. There's Tri-X 35 and Tri-X 120. On the 35 pack, you've got a high contrast and a low contrast. You've got a lower grain setting because Tri-X is a bit grainy just as a film stock and you may not like that on all of your digital files. So there's a modifier to lower the grain. There's a modifier called Portrait Push, and what this is going to do is it's gonna take skin tones and push them more towards white, because if you were to look at like a Google image search of Tri-X film, you're gonna see portraits with Tri-X can be quite pale and white on the skin, so I wanted to give that option to push portraits to that spectrum. There is a pull, which is gonna lower the exposure, and a push, which is gonna raise the exposure. Both will affect the contrast. 
there is a sharpen modifier because a lot of times in black and white photography that's digital, you get a pretty sharp image. And this is especially true on Leica monochrome sensors. And so as you're shooting, you might like a sharper image than the preset is going to give you. That sharpen modifier is gonna sharpen the image up, make it more clear and make it a little bit punchier. And then we've got borders for both the 120 and the 35 pack. The 35 pack will bring black borders to your horizontal or vertical crops. And the 120 pack will give you white borders for your horizontal or vertical crops. The 120 is going to be the exact same family of modifiers. It do the same thing, but they are different depending upon what you're using. So on the 35, the high contrast is gonna be different than the high contrast on the 120. What you're gonna find typically if you shoot Trix 35 and 120 is 120 is gonna have a bit more range of latitude. It's gonna be a bit more gray and a lower contrast and a little bit of a more of a faded white point. Whereas 35 is gonna be a bit more punchy and contrasty. And so that's true of the preset as well. So let's jump in and just look at a handful of images and see how the preset works. So let's start with this landscape by putting 120 on. And that is our preset. And I'm gonna just raise the exposure slightly and I'm gonna actually lower the grain on this one. When we lower the grain, you can still see the grain in the sky, but it's not quite as it was before. Here would be the before. And with the lower grain, if you're looking at the sky, you can see what the difference would be. This photo was shot quite underexposed. Let's bring the brightness up and let's use the 120 again. Let's make it lower grain and let's use portrait push on this one. And I want you to notice how her skin brightens up with the portrait push modifier. Let's use that. Let's sharpen it up. And we're looking pretty great. Let's switch over to this photo from London. I'm gonna use the 35 on it. I'm gonna push it to brighten it up a little. I'm actually gonna bring up the exposure even more than that. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna crop it in a little tighter. And I'm gonna make this one high contrast just to embrace it. And that is how our 35 looks. Let's do another 35. Let's pull this one, make it high contrast. And let's put on a black border from the 35 pack. If you're new to very good presets, you may notice that we're not really touching much of the sliders and that's intentional because the preset is meant to work and the modifiers are meant to give you some options to make it more of your own. And of course you can come in here and touch the sliders as well, but they're designed so that you don't have to. Here's some cowboys at a rodeo. Let's put on the 120. Let's push that and make it brighter and then let's use portrait push to get their skin tones a little higher. I'm just gonna flip that back and forth so you can see how their skin tones brighten up with portrait push. I'm gonna push it even further and I'm gonna sharpen this one as well. Now I'm gonna come in here and put a one by one crop on it. So it looks like my Roly Flex. Just for fun, let's put on the borders from the 35 pack to give it that black border. And that looks awesome. All we touched was the exposure because I didn't shoot it that great. So that's all me. Here's another portrait. This is Christian Wallowing Bull, an incredible singer songwriter from Wyoming. Let's put the 35 on him. Let's use the portrait push to brighten his skin up. Let's lower the contrast on this one and then we will push it to brighten it up a little bit. And I love how this looks in black and white. Notice with portrait push, we make the skin tone just really present on the highlight side of the spectrum. And that is very true of Tri-X. Let's do something architectural, like this photo of the London eye with the sunlight hitting. I'm gonna make a quick adjustment to the crop. Let's go on with the 120. Let's make it high contrast and let's push it. So maybe I wanna change my mind and go with the 35. Let's go over here to 35. Let's do the 35 high contrast. And then let's put the exposure back to zero and just creep it up ourselves. Here is a landscape I shot in England, 120 on it. Let's crop it into a six by seven. 
We will straighten that horizon up, center that lighthouse. All right, so now that we've put that on, let's make it higher contrast. Let's push it. And then let's put on our vertical borders. How about this castle here? Let's use the 35. Let's push it. Let's go low grain with it. Or another landscape here. We'll also use the 35. We'll pull this one. We will make it high contrast. Then we'll click over to the bench. Let's use 120. We'll make it high contrast and we'll push it. Oh, we got a few more left here. Let's just quickly throw this preset on because I want to demonstrate something to you. Here's a 35. Bryce Canyon, we'll use the 120. We'll make it high contrast. 35, let's go low grain. Let's push it out in the Aegean Sea. Let's use the 120. Let's make it low contrast and let's sharpen it. Another portrait that was underexposed. Let's brighten it up and then let's put 35 on. Low grain, let's sharpen it and make it high contrast. Here's me taking a photo in Oregon. Let's use 120. Let's go low contrast. Let's push it. That looks like medium format. Uh, here's another photo portrait from Oregon. Let's use 120. Let's high contrast that. Let's pull it. San Francisco. Let's crop it better. Let's go 35. Let's push it. Santa Cruz coastline here. Let's go 120 contrast and push it. Did I miss any? Oh yeah, here's the guy in London putting out a cigarette, 35. Let's go high contrast, let's push it, and then let's crop it in better. It's one of my favorite photos I took in London. I don't know why, but I do like it. And I think we just did 21 photos. And now let's just take a look at what they look like as a gallery. And if you look at this gallery, it's very consistent photo to photo, even though we're talking about landscapes, portraits, travel, architecture, random stuff going on. And the other thing I want you to know about what you're looking at here is we've got a plethora of cameras from a 5D Mark IV to a Leica M10R to a Leica M11 to a Sony A7R IV. Like these photos don't just represent one camera and one system the preset works on. This is across the board, a bunch of random photos from random cameras. This preset is available today at the link below. It is available in Lightroom as I've just demoed. It's also available in Capture One developed by Chris Prince. And he is this incredible Capture One technician. He does all of the very good presets Capture One versions. And that's also linked right below. Both systems were developed together while being independent in the workflow so that Lightroom makes sense for Lightroom users and Capture One makes sense for Capture One users but it's all there as you just saw it. If this preset is something you are interested in, you can get a discount by using the codes that are listed below as well and save a little money on your purchase of Very Good Presets Tri-X. And as always, you can purchase this with confidence knowing that we are going to stand by it. If you send in a support request, you're gonna get a response. And we also periodically may update these presets. And when we do, we don't charge you for those updates. We say, hey, we found a bug or we found a better way to do this. Here's an update of it. It's very important to me. It's very important to Chris and very good presets as a brand that you have an efficient and inspirational workflow to make your photos how you envision them. So check out the links below. Check out Very Good Presets Try X. I hope you guys are inspired by it. You love it. And you embrace that monochromatic life. So go out there, have fun, make photos, and I will see you guys next time.